What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right. So before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Tomiko for once again showing love to the channel with the twenty dollar donation via the PayPal. Much respect to you for showing love to Too Raw for TV, aka Too Raw for Sports. I saw your note, and I agree with you one hundred percent. When it comes to uh, LeBron James and the Colt, I did a video the other day talking about uh, on my other channel how you know you can't reason with Colts. It's, it's not logic. It, it, you know we see it in politics. You know when it comes to these a lot of these individuals, it's not it's not based on logic or philosophy. It's a cult of personality. You know. But anyway, much respect to you for showing love once again to Too Raw for TV, a.k.a. Too Raw for Sports. So let's talk about this bum-ass Joel Embiid, man. You know, this is my third video talking about him in, what, the last day and a half or something. Um, one video I did, you know, he's talking about, you know, potentially ring chasing, potentially going to another franchise to win a title. Then, as one of my subscribers put it, to keep Philly fans off his ass, all of a sudden, I, don't know, I, I, I think I could see me playing for Philly like Kobe did, you know, like, like Doc did for 20 years, whatever the fuck it is, man. Now, one NBA fan completely ethered Joel Embiid when it comes to his playoff choking. And I have to say, I've changed my mind on some things. I've changed my mind because previously, I've considered James Harden and Chris Paul to be the biggest choke artists in playoff history. But after reading this, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely swayed toward Joel Embiid. Definitely, because at least Harden and Chris Paul have been to NBA Finals. This guy can't get out of the second round of playoffs. And it has a lot to do with his horrific, historically awful play. So, here we go. The best team Joel Embiid has ever beaten in the playoffs is the 2022 fifth seed Raptors, led by Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. He averages only 22 points per game on 49.2% true shooting in elimination games, a nine-game sample size. That was normal true shooting, like 59, 60, 61. Is that normal? And once you get, well, when I say normal, I mean superstar-wise. And then once you get over that, it's like just, Galactic play or something close to seventy. Forty nine point two, that's not very good at all. That's that's pretty that's pretty awful. And no playoff run has he ever averaged more assists than turnovers. He is the only MVP in league history to never make the conference finals. Now his career isn't over yet, but when you look at all the MVPs that we've had since going back to Bob Pettit in the mid fifties, and this is the only guy to never even make a conference finals. This year, he had the biggest point per game drop from regular season to the playoffs of any MVP winning season. And I think it was from 33 points per game to 23 points per game. He turned the ball over eight times in back-to-back -back elimination games against the Hawks in 2021. Yeah, see, the media... Like to make it sound like it was all Ben Simmons in that series. And a lot of it was. But make no mistake about it, Joel Embiid was a huge factor in that series loss as well to the Hawks. He's shot under 20% from three over his last two playoff runs. He had a worse effective field goal percentage than Russell Westbrook during the 2023 playoffs. But we know Russ is a guy that 
can't shoot, right? So Russ is a guy. I remember Russ had two games shooting like three for 18 against the Phoenix Suns. Two, remember? Two games shooting like that. And he had a worse field goal, effective field goal percentage than Russell Westbrook in the playoffs. What is that telling you about this clown? With a chance to go up 3-1 against the fifth seeded Hawks in Game 4 in 2021, Joel Embiid went 0 of 12 in the second half, including missing a wide open layup to take the lead. A wide open layup. He got stripped by, of all people, Danilo Gallinari to seal the loss in Game 7. Down three in game five of the same series with 15 seconds left. He missed both free throws to seal the game. All of his offensive numbers, points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, turnovers, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throws, are worse in the playoffs than the regular season with the exception of free throw percentage. <laughs> he has only one playoff, he's only won one playoff series in his career where he's played in all four wins against the Raptors. And if I remember correctly, well, before I make this point, they don't count the Brooklyn series because he didn't play in half the damn series. But even against the Raptors, remember, they almost blew a 3 nothing lead. Remember? Weren't they up 3 nothing against the Raptors and the Raptors were able to force a game six? That goes to show you right there the choke the two of Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers and James Harden. He is on three in game he is on three in game sevens and has posted a 49% true shooting percentage and 5.3 turnovers a game in those th- uh, three game seven losses. He once got swept in a series despite averaging 15 free throws per game against the Boston Celtics in 2020. Over the last two seasons, he has a 9.2 BPM or block or box plus minus in the regular season. Just domination, right? <laughs> and a 1.0 BPM in the playoffs. <laughs> Worst of all, he is only 9 of 38 in clutch situations within 5 points or last 5 minutes by NBA definition during his playoff career with an unfathomable true shooting percentage of 35.7%. Not to mention the fact that every damn year he gets hurt in the playoffs. Every fucking year it's something. Whether it's uh, an orbital fracture one year, left eyeball socket, one year the right eyeball socket, Fingers, uh, knee problems, gastrointestinal issues, out of shape. Uh, it's always something. Wrist injury. It's always something with this guy. Which is why I say time and time again, anybody that follow my channel knows this, I don't care when he scores 50 in the regular season against the Magic or whoever it is. I don't care when he drops 59 against... Um, you know, against the uh, Raptors or the Kings or whoever. I don't care. The only time I will care is when he replicates these performances consistently in the playoffs. Not saying he had to drop 50 or 60, but just <clears throat> 30, 31, 37, 40, 23, you know, 27. You have, a, you have a couple of bad games. But damn. But anyway, that's all I got to say about it, man. Tell me what you guys think.